and the community call is being recorded from now on so with a welcome those that have already joined so for sure we'll have more people joining um so one more uh, uh, community call of, of open air provide uh, to engage with all the, the data source managers that are contributing to the open air infrastructure so today we have one main topic uh, about the um, the roadmap uh, about the way that we are integrating uh, the open air and data sources as as yosk um, as yosk um, uh, providers or or, or, or as YOSC data sources of the YOSC research product catalog. So the idea is to make it clear. Also last week, there were um, an important activity, the YOSC providers um, days. Some of you may have also joined some of the sessions. So today we have um, the Open Air CTO, the Open Air, um, the Open Air CTO, Paulo Mangi, to uh, make this clear for those uh, that are interested in this uh, in this community calls um, to be uh, to have more detailed information about what uh, it's being developed um, for the the yosk this specific research product catalog and the way that uh, being a, um, an open air provider you are also part of this of this uh, research product catalog this was this is the main objective but as we also have the um, uh, already in bed available uh, an interface to resisted Chris system Chris systems we also want to highlight this new new feature um so this is the agenda for uh, for today um so mainly focus on the yosk research product catalog with paulo but let's start as usual with the the, the novelty so feel free to um, to ask questions in the chat or uh, even in the in the in the note document that we have available even sometimes we receive questions in the note document and we can answer reply after the the, the session so feel free also to do it but of course please make this community call more interactive um, and mute yourself and and ask questions okay uh, what um we have um, three things to highlight from uh, from um, the recent uh, recent developments on some, some of the the novelties. So a new index update uh, for open air uh, graph that is uh, made available in in production and uh, via the the different um, open air services. So in the discovery service in Explore and and, and also. Uh, you have already also received the notifications from the broker based on this uh, update so uh, be aware that you can always check in this link uh, that andre also can can share the here in the chat um, that we have available in the portal what are the the most uh, um, uh, relevant uh, novelties i just highlighted some here but the content was updated the last uh, first of May. Then, of course, we see all these updates available in production in different services uh, in, in the different days over the, over the week. But uh, so you can see it in the in explore in, in explore and then in provide and available in the APIs. Um, so be aware that we have this uh, page. Let me open Firefox. I have it open here. So this page uh, uh, with the index and status up, and stats update, you can always check this. When was the last time? Just for you to 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 make some highlights. I think what is important is that we have uh, now um, uh, in in ex, in uh, and this is visible in Explore uh, the the FOS and the. Um, and the SDG classification. So it's interesting for you to, to check. Um, uh, we are in that phase that we also want the feedback from, from the users to, to validate the approach, uh, but this is uh, visible. Uh, you can see it in Explore via the filters or, or via a, a, a record, a normal record. Uh, and um, it's it's interesting. So you will see the FOS and the and the sustainability development goals also classification available. There was an an important update as we have usually people from from Portugal, but this is also 
important for others, uh, an important update of the of the, um, the the database of one specific funder from the Portuguese funder FCT that really like duplicate the number of projects available um, from over 30,000 to 70,000 um, projects based on an authoritative database from, from, from FCT. So this increase a lot the, the, the quality of, of the data that we have from this specific funder and it's a, a real a good case like others, uh, like others that we have in open air, like other national funders. So, um, if you want to ask anything about this recent update, uh, be, you, you can do it. Um, so, one thing in beta uh, visible is the, the, the CREASE system registration. Uh, it's available. We, we, we tested uh, over the last uh, two weeks. We want to do the same updates, uh, but, but it's in beta available. Um, so be aware that you don't need to have a data source register in beta to test because the functionalities of the validator and the registration are open. So you can um, you can use it if you go to beta.provide.openair.eu, you can you can test it. So we we are open <laughs> um, in that way. So the the so feel free to to test and if you have any suggestion, please feel free to contact us. We already. Uh, identify some things that we want to change, some wording, some, uh, but um, we will do, we are doing that and uh, we want to put it in production uh, as soon as possible and um, hopefully uh, in, the, in, the, in the coming week. And the last thing uh, is the, um, what I have presented you about the terms of use uh, last call and I can remind ourselves. So we, we want to, to have an update from all the, um, the the content providers for their terms of use, so the um, the acceptance of the the metadata aggregation and also the the, the full text. So it's a simple process. So we will have a pop up window in the first time that you you access the the provide dashboard, or you we have a specific tab to to update that information. Uh, we put it, I must say, to be completely transparent, we put it in production this morning. We were not happy with some things that we were not expecting. So we just, before this call, we just put the same version that we had before. So we will do some tests today after the, 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 the community call and with more, without stress of this community call, put it in production. So tomorrow this will be, Visible. I just want to to highlight what we are talking about, as some of you um, uh, may not uh, be aware. Let me just um, log in again, just to because I I I am realizing that there are several people here that were not in the in the previous call. Just for you to to understand what we are talking about. So we want to also to be completely um, transparent. Uh, you know that the, we, the, uh, the oh, sorry, I got, I'm doing the, I'm, I'm talking and accessing the service at the same time and things didn't work well. So I don't want to join with my personal account. I want to have a, data source here um, we want to be it's important for us to um, to update the terms of use uh, because some of the content providers that we have currently joined long time ago they didn't have the opportunity to update the terms of use we have updated our policies in 2018 so we have uh, providers that join after 2018 uh, some providers that didn't have and uh, did any update after 2018 so this is the time for us to 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 completely um so update the terms of use and and with this uh, um, the beta is not working uh, properly, so I will avoid to explain to you this uh, and, and keep. So if 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 I can access to the beta, I will I will let you know. So um, you we have this pop up window that will open the first time that we join, and then we have 
in the update tab a specific area for you to update the terms of use. Um, what we also have included is the specific, uh, we will highlight the, the, the date that the last time that we have, you have updated the terms of use to make it more clear for you. So this is what we want to have in production uh, by tomorrow. Be aware that we have enriched the information that we have available in the public roadmap. Uh, so you can access the public roadmap and also contribute with your suggestions. If you have any suggestions, of course, we have this community calls for you to also to do the same. So the index update, the, the, the decrease uh, registration in beta and the terms of use soon, <laughs> tomorrow, for sure. In fact, we have already uh, for some time available in production, but we discard this, uh, this update. Um, okay, uh, we will check. I just want before to pass the word, the, the floor to Paulo Mangi to just to highlight what we can highlight from the the, the crease the crease registration. So um, we are have now uh, in beta and we are testing uh, the as an authoritative uh, source of information for registration of CRIS systems, the DRIS, the directory of CRIS systems run by EuroCRIS. Okay, this is a partnership with EuroCRIS. We have integrated, so we have now, like we have uh, for data repositories, re 3 data, like for publication repositories, open door, we, we have now DRIS as an authoritative source for the, re the registration of CRIS system, integrated in open air, available through this workflow of registration, available in beta. Uh, we, you can check by country. You see the um, the CRI systems that have that are registered in DRIS system. So please make sure that your CRI system is registered in EuroCRIS. And then we you can you can proceed with the registration, identify uh, the scope of the type of CRI system based on the typology that is used in in DRIS in the in the directory from from EuroCRIS if it is a funder CRIS a national or a, an institutional CRIS and then proceed with the registration of the interface. You, we have a specific tab for terms of for acceptance of terms of use and the, everything will work uh, well. So um, be aware that we have this in, product, in, in beta for you to, to check. Um, now, uh, the topic of uh, that I, uh, that it's the, it's our focus. If you have any question about this, let me check. So maybe what we have here in chat are just the links from um, from Andre. So feel free to ask questions. And during the, the not only about what Paul will present, but also about what I highlighted now. And uh, now let's let's uh, let's have this um, special topic here in this call with Paulo Mangi to explicitly. Um, clarify to you the way that <coughs> us as data source of open air are part of this this Yosk research product catalog. So Paulo, I will stop my okay. Can you see and my thank screen? You. Yes, thank you, Paulo, for joining. Uh, it, it's not in the in the presentation mode for us. It just we need to change to swap with the display. Yes, I want to do what I want. Let me first you can change it in the i could i could swap it right okay perfect thank you Okay, <clears throat> so this was uh, this is the presentation that I uh, gave at the EOS Provider Space for the uh, libraries session. Um, so as such, it uh, includes all the discussion that we are going to have in the EOS uh, for repository managers. Okay, so repository managers here are seen as the delegates of the libraries for the maintenance of and operation of their repositories. So. Uh, briefly, um, the EOSC, as it is being conceived today, in, in a few words, is uh, uh, 
the thin layer that allows providers of services or research products, as we are calling them, research products here are again publications, data sets, software, things that objects that you uh, are storing in your repositories today together with the metadata. Uh, services are the ones that are typically available through the uh, research infrastructures catalog or the e infrastructures catalogs. Um, and they should be part of uh, the EOSC um, resource map. Okay. So uh, the catalog, the resource catalog is there to maintain such a map. So to acquire the information, the metadata information uh, about the services and about the products, which happens to be something that we've been doing for ages uh, in OpenWare, okay, where the services are the repositories in that sense, because they are services. And the products are the, uh, again, the goods that are uh, sold or and consumed via the repositories. And of course, we have many more kind of data sources, kinds of data sources. So we have the aggregators, we have the publishers, publisher sites in this case. Uh, we have the registries that you will know, ORCID, OpenWare. So we have several kinds of content. But again, the open air came uh, before they used to acquire this kind of information, which did not uh, uh, regard, at least so far, uh, the services, so the thematic service, services, because we were not interested in anything that wasn't related with the research products, uh, which were and still are our main focus. So we'd like to track in science how it evolves, how the products are connected, how the products have been funded, and where are these products stored, so that's it. So the, the USC future and the resource catalog are still uh, working uh, with this underpinning thinking, okay? So libraries and repositories share, uh, uh, libraries share the repositories, via the repositories share their research products, and somebody else can consume uh, from the other side. The USC users, which are the user suspects that we have in open air, so policymakers, uh, researchers, uh, communities, uh, institutions, etc., uh, uh, and uh, are not really uh, very different from what we have conceived so far. So, uh, the resources in the EOSC are services, as I just mentioned, which can be thematic, horizontal computing, storage. And there's a classification set, a full classification for that. And uh, they can also be data sources. Data sources are kind of horizontal services uh, intended to store, preserve, and uh, provide access to uh, the outcomes of science. So repositories well belong to this class. And uh, we have specific kind of research products, which are the ones that we have today in open air. So for you, this language is uh, more familiar than the, the, the people uh, outside of open air. So, Data sources are those storing publications, data sets, research software, and others. And these are all entities that the EOSC resource catalog will uh, maintain and provide services and resource products. So example of a service in the context of the EOSC is this geohazard uh, platform that uh, is operated under the EPOS research infrastructure umbrella, uh, provided because it has a provider by Taradue. Or we have the EGI compute, which is a different level. So if the first one is very thematic, this one is like computing provided by EGI. And then, of course, we have the repositories, like Zenodo can be, which is uh, whose provider is open air, um, but is uh, there to serve a different class of products. So, resource products, which will be available as EOS quantities, uh, but they are already in the graph, of course, of today from September's. September 2022 are the ones that we know about. So a publication that is linked to a data set that can also be linked to a software together with the relationship with uh, the repository where the object is contained. So everything you're familiar with. All this will be part of the use catalog. Uh, how this will happen? This will happen through the open air graph. So this is really good news for you because if you're already part of the open air graph, then your products will be available through the resource product catalog of the EOSC. So if you have a data source, uh, a repository, um, you can, you will be optionally uh, 
asked to register to the EOSC as a data source, so you can appear as a EOSC service like Zenodo we've seen before. The repository can appear also in the marketplace of the EOSC. And as a result of the fact that you are in the open air, you're really compliant with the guidelines, everything is fine, blah, blah. You're also part of the open air resource graph and therefore of the resource product catalog of the EOSC, which is these two are the two components of the service and the resource product catalogs that will deliver the EOSC resource. Uh, catalog. So, so far, if your repository is in the open air resource graph, then the resource products of your organization will be in the EOSC resource catalog. The extra mile you have to walk is the one where you are uh, willingly saying, I want my repository to also be registered as an EOSC service. Now, there are discussions here, so uh, ongoing discussions in the EOSC. The EOSC uh, onboarding for services, um, it's uh, slightly different from the one we have uh, for research products. So it follows a different workflow. Okay. In this workflow, uh, you need to register your service through a platform, so providing a number of fields, metadata fields. Then uh, your uh, submission is passed over to the EPOT team, which is the EOSC portfolio, I don't remember, something that has to do with validation anyway. So what this team does is to uh, evaluate your application and check if, first of all, you are a serious uh, service. So if you're doing something that is related with science, uh, you're not trying to spam uh, the registry with uh, information that is not uh, um, related with the EOSC activities. And then check if the information you've provided is fine, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, until you are uh, admitted and you can appear in the US catalog. Now, there are discussions if we can, uh, for the uh, data sources, so the repositories that are already registered in uh, open air, to admit them all, like to have a green light. So uh, in this case, uh, they would need to soften a lot uh, the kind of rules of participation they have today, because uh, the, the, the information that we collect in open air is not aligned with the full metadata profile that is mandatory today uh, on the EOSC side. But if this will happen, uh, this means that we'll, you will have to do nothing. You know, just by magic, your repository will be both registered in the EOSC service catalog, so as a EOSC service profile, and your products will be in, open air, uh, in the open air graph as they are today, therefore, in the EOSC resource council. Of course, we'll follow up with this decision. Uh, but if this not will take place, then what will happen is that from the provide that uh, Pedro is uh, presenting to you every week with the updates, you will find an update. So you will find an update that will allow your service to be registered to the EOSC as a service. So by clicking a button, you will be forwarded to the EOSC service catalog where you will complete your profile and finally register the service properly uh, into the EOSC machinery, okay? So to which extent you will have to do some manual work or everything will be straightforward is to be decided yet, but uh, this is the status of things at the moment. Uh, so of course, once you share your resources, as it is today, they will be available through the US catalog, through uh, the uh, European participant portal, the various services we are connected with, uh, and so on. So you will get all the benefits that you have today, nothing in exchange. Uh, you, of course, will also be able to benefit of the brokering uh, feature. And it may well be the case that uh, we will also make sure that some links, if available, between, for example, new kind of links, for example, between the publications and the EOSC services, if available, can be uh, fed back uh, to your repository if you're interested. Because an idea that we have, uh, it's not an idea, it's something more concrete, is we, we are running experiments today already to mine uh, articles, article full text, to find references to EOSC services and uh, reveal this link as part of the graph uh, to track also how services are being mentioned. So to provide an extra indicators on the quality of services. 
And these, of course, can be made available to you and to your repositories if you're interested and uh, will be visible uh, via our websites and, uh, and so on. So that's it. I think this was everything I had to say. So if you have any questions, um, we can dig in into the details of that. Okay, great. Thank you. Uh, Paolo, uh, I think just, just to make things uh, clear here, what can we say that are the, the open uh, issues uh, currently regarding the, those that are already open air data sources? So it's just this, this issue of um, being automatically part of IOSC or not? So, so, so for the moment, if you are providing uh, your data to the open air graph, your, data, your products metadata to the open air graph, uh, your organization and your repository is fine with respect of the provision of the research products. What is to be found and understood is if also the repository will appear as an EOSC service. Of course, it will appear as a data source in open air, okay? And it will, be, it will appear as, a, uh, let's say, the provenance information, as it is today in the graph. But it's different from saying that your uh, data source is also an EOSC data source, okay? For that, you need to formally appear in the EOSC catalog. So this is something that you can do yourself. So if you register today in the EOSC uh, uh, service catalog, you can, you will register, you manually include all the necessary metadata. And on our side, we'll make sure the magic will happen. So we'll link your data source uh, to the uh, data source that you have in open air. So the service will be, of course, uh, linked to what we have in the graph. But otherwise, you can wait and see if uh, this will happen magically thanks to a change of policy in the EOSC. Okay? So if the EOSC accepts our list of registrants, uh, data sources in open air, as eligible to become your services, then the magic is done, okay? Uh, but you're free, of course, if you want to anticipate that moment, because this may happen, I don't know, at the end of the year or after the summer, uh, you can, of course, go to the portal, register your data source, and on our side, we are deduplicating. So please, of course, try to describe your data source, giving all the details, that are necessary to make the magic happen. The same name, for example, <laughs> don't change the name, uh, the same URL that you're using uh, to describe you know, the entry, the, the website of your data source, uh, the right country and so on. So if you're using that kind of information, then the magic will happen by itself, especially if you use the domain, the URL uh, properly specified. Uh, this will make your service appear as a new service sooner uh, with all the fields that are being requested there. Uh, and at the same time, it will link it uh, to, in the EOSC resource catalog to your data. Yeah, thank you. I think for, for, for um, in, in, to put it more in, in practical terms, I think uh, if, uh, if in our institutions, um, we are receiving any specific request to be part of EOSC. I think we should, we can move um, fast and go to the EOSC portal and register. Andrea already also shared the, the link here. You can find that information. If not, you can also wait for this um, process the, that we will have, um, even if it is an automatic thing, or then if you need to do some additional work, but at least it, it will be something natural with a, a relation between the provide service itself from the side of open air and the EOSC portal. But there, are, there are always need to be a, a manual action if it is not um, by you, if it is not an automatic process. But yes, uh, some services are already doing this. For Zenodo, yes. for example, is registered in the EOSC marketplace. Yes. And we have uh, created the linkage between the two. So, okay, so this new uh, phase of the graph will be ready in beta by June. The second June, we have the year's review, year's future review, and we are we will provide the first integration between the year's catalog and the data sources that we have, with uh, the, the duplication between the two, which is curated manually by us. So we can, uh, of course, make sure things are right if something goes wrong, and. Uh, uh, anything that will happen after that. So if you register 
on the EOSC service catalog side uh, will be reflected in terms of the duplication into the graph. So you will see everything uniformly. So your data source, basically your repository, you will see it uh, belongs to the EOSC uh, service catalog, uh, open door, uh, wherever it appears. Okay. So we are collecting your profiles from the different places. Thank you very much. Um, so I feel free to ask questions. So this is the time. So we are in this uh, uh, group discussion. So feel free to, to ask questions or to share your doubts about, uh, should I register now? Should I wait to do it later? So feel free. Um, so I think this slide is quite, uh, well um clear for us to understand <laughs> it's it's clear for us to understand the, the the process of this onboarding process for this research product catalog but um so is there anyone that want to ask a question share any thought about this process for some of you uh, it's a novelty for others for sure it's not a novelty <laughs> Um, I recognize a few that were also in the in the providers' day, but not 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 all. Um, Sorry, uh, Pedro, I have one question. How yes, can I find my resources uh, uh, in the uh, EOS catalog? Okay, you, you to be you need to register there. Uh, I I have registered it okay. on open air, and I uh, 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 registered is to EOSC through Niforos. Uh, Can I check? Uh, yes, so it's available in the, let me open. So for for registration, I was this, I, I have this page open just to, to share to share with you. So for the, for the process of registration, so you can check here in the four providers, uh, become a provider and, be, and, re, and register the source and follow the process there are uh, also it's quite well documented uh, the information about the the type of fields that you need to to fill um your services should be here under the the, the catalog and and um, so all the services that are um, that are represented until uh, uh, technology re readiness level num uh, number seven are part of the catalog. Those that have, uh, that have more than um, uh, level eight are, can be part of the marketplace, but, uh, but uh, you can, uh, let's, let's find, let's search. So uh, if the process of registration, George, already finished, uh, successful finish uh, should be part of the catalog okay as i am uh, sharing the screen and, and doing this demo so i'm sharing just the the, the service the the dmp it's an, it's another thing <laughs> the data management plan uh, tool from from open air argus and it's registered here uh, and uh, so then you can uh, you can see um, you can see the information of, of the source of this service, uh, do the, see the details and access the, the resource itself. So uh, it's everything it's under the catalog. Okay, thanks. Yeah. I understand. The information for registration is under, is, is the, for providers for the registration. Okay, just uh, to, to make one thing clear. So for the moment, if you go to the EOS portal, you can only see services. So research products are not there yet. Mm -hmm. It will be in June, okay? And uh, in September, in September. Yes, in June. You in said June, September. Yes. In June they will be available in beta, okay? Okay. okay. So in June you will be able to uh, see and check uh, what you can do from a beta portal. Uh, a beta portal that I can show you quickly, but it's basically it's the explore that we have in Open Air mm -hmm. for uh, the EOSC. So we have adapted to this look and feel that you see the open air portal. And in, from there, you will be able to find all the resource products, the, of course, your repositories and the USC service, okay? Yeah, okay. I think it's yes, this difference is important. I think it's, uh, it's already clear, yeah, well, but there are the services catalog and the research product catalog. The research product catalog, it's under development and will be made available. Uh, Later. And one more question to clarify. We have uh, increased systems which 
is a collection of the scientists of Georgia. And through ONIFOROS, we register it is on, op uh, through, uh, on open ear and through ONIFOROS on the uh, um, uh, uh, EOSC. But mm -hmm. these resources uh, will not uh, will appear only uh, September. Yes, not now. Not now. Uh, thank you. They exactly. will be available in open air. Yes, but in uh, in EOSC, no. Of course, in the <coughs> open air they will be available. Uh, let me show one thing quickly if we have time. Uh, this room. Yes. Thank you, George, for your questions. If others have questions, just feel free to, to ask. Uh, so Paulo will also give okay. you some more input. So uh, this is what the, the first idea of what you will see. Can you see that? Yes. OK. Uh, you can already today uh, search these things to the Open Air Portal. See, the look and feel is the European Open Science Cloud. This is the uh, Open Air Index. You will find, instead of content providers, you will find services and data sources. Okay. So from here, by clicking here, today you find only the repositories, as you can see. Uh, tomorrow you will find uh, also the EOSC service types. Uh, one of these will be the data sources. And if you're clicking on the data sources, of course, you will be you'll find yourself in the same scenario that you are today okay so we are merging the two efforts on the open mm -hmm. it's effort on our side so we'll take the eos service catalog as a data source in open air it's like a registry of services and of course we'll deduplicate them um, so the EOS service catalog will be very similar to open door to re3 data in that sense it's a list of services okay so you will yeah. be able to connect things yeah, thank you, Paolo, for sharing this <laughs> and their and their and their development. Thank you. Okay, I think uh, things are more clear. So we wanted to um, to have Paolo here with this explanation just to make things more clear in terms of this relation between those that are open air providers and that will become data sources in EOSC also. Um, if you don't have any other question, um, let me just check the chat and to see. Um, here is Jan Vojak. Uh, Paolo, please, oh, what is the metadata difference? What fields are missing from the full registration for an EOS? Uh, service provider that many, are not currently very, very not available in many many sir many of them mm -hmm. um, if you take a look at the <laughs> service profile it's a lot of information that we are not requiring in open air so the good news is that what you're providing uh -huh. today uh, is now part of the uh, eos data model for services uh, when the type of the service is data source um but there is a plethora of fields that we're not asking that you're supposed to fill in um have you seen the, the eos profiles okay. is that okay. like you, you can check them out mm -hmm. uh, is that like uh, free text fields some of them are free text yeah. some of them are to be provided by uh, uh ontologies and classes so mm -hmm. it's a quite long list Yes, I'm sharing here the, the link in just for you to, to be so it, aware. It, it it's under work. that uh, for you. providers. It's, it's not an action that you do in five minutes. You will need, I don't know, half an hour. Uh, I see. I because see. you need half an hour, need, half an hour. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, you need to find this information. For example, you will be asked, uh, provide the URL for your privacy, your privacy policy. So you need to, uh -huh. find, okay. In that case, you need to find those things out. Uh, mm -hmm. These are the mm -hmm. data sources. This is the data source stuff, uh, which we uh, averagely already have and collect from the open door, the refri data. So you find mm -hmm. it out of the box. But if you look at the services, uh, yeah, or to find it, uh, follow the four providers, and you should find it. There's a lot of stuff. Yes, I'm sharing the screen where it is the the Yosk data source profile. 
Yes. Uh, there is a, there is a spreadsheet and the yes. and the mm -hmm. PDF um, with the the list of fields uh, available. So it's quite well documented, I think. Now in the past, maybe not so clear, but now I think it's quite quite clear. Yeah, we did it for our services, and it took some time for each service. It depends on how much of this information you already have at hand. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I think it's important to have. Uh, we've been discussing this a lot uh, in the IOSC. So it's information that is typically very hard to get. And uh, finding it in one place for all services is very useful for, for those, for the point of view of the consumers of the services. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Thanks for the clarification. Okay, thank you, Ivan, for your question. So, um, <clears throat> I'm just checking here if there is any any other question. If not, let's just um, feel free to ask question in the coming one or two minutes before I close the call. Uh, so, um, <clears throat> hope to have like the terms of use in production to, to tomorrow. The the beta I'm realizing that is not working uh, properly. Some we have some. Uh, some things that are under under intervention this this afternoon. So, if you want to test the CRIS uh, registration process, please please do it tomorrow. So I already sent the messages here to my colleagues to alert that in fact I was testing um, some 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 hours ago and everything was working well, but now it's not working. So. Uh, uh, Try try tomorrow. So for the those that are interested in the CRIS process, um, the others uh, about the terms of use. So uh, when you come back to the provider to the to the dashboard, uh, you will see the pop up window, or you will see the new the new update menu with the the needed action for the terms of use. Um, our upcoming call will be on the 1st of June. Uh, we have two or three th topics that we would like uh, to discuss. So feel free also to, to, to suggest uh, topics if you, if you want to have uh, something uh, for, for discussion. We have that, uh, be aware that we have that relation between the provide dashboard and the data management plan tools, the Argos tool. So that we are thinking to have uh, interesting integrations. We already discussed it, I think, two calls ago, uh, but we, we want to have a, a discussion with you about to have kind of use cases, what you would like to see, for example, from researchers that are using the Argo system to prepare and to deliver a data management plan, uh, in information integrated in the provide for you to be aware of uh, the intention, for example, for a project to deposit that, the data in a specific data repository or um, that possibility to have a... Um, uh, connection straightforward to public to public the to publish the DMP in your specific uh, publication repository, for example. So, but we have other topics that we would like to to discuss in in future calls. So the next will be on the first of June. Uh, June will be a, really an interesting month because there are also other international events, the open repositories and. Um, other, other, other. I think the Chris, the 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 Euro Chris meeting will be in May or June. Uh, Jen, you can uh, you can advertise if you want. <laughs> the I, I I know that the, the first week of June, the Open Repository is in Denver. There are also the Dataverse Community meeting in June. Uh, the Euro Chris conference uh, will be in Euro Chris. Uh, Conference is actually next week. Oh, yeah, in next week, Dubrovnik, so, Croatia. Dubrovnik in the great, in yeah. the great venue. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, yeah, thank you again. Uh, so it's not in June, but it's in in, in May. Um, uh, so June will be a, an interesting month of, with lots of activities and events, and also in the first of June, our community call. Subscribe the newsletter as usually we do this advertisement. We send every first Monday or Tuesday of the month, the newsletter just before our call with the novelties. Um, this month also there is uh, the conference, the, the COAR conference, the Confederation of Open Access Conference. I'm just realizing about that because we also uh, 
advertise this joint statement um, also from from coar in our last newsletter so um checking again the chat uh, so if you don't have any other any other question so thank you very much the recordings will be made available for you also the presentation uh, with also the presentation of paulo uh, in the in the in, in the open air portal so openair.eu you have under support a specific page for these community calls so with all the information in the previous recordings even if you want to be aware of other presentations like we did about the user statistics last time about the fair assessment uh, some some calls ago so there there are some uh, interesting topics that we have already discussed in previous calls that you can also access so thank you very much uh, paulo thank you for joining and for all these uh, great clar clarifications um, and we are uh, closing now the this community thank call you. of course i'm available also offline so if you have a special request send me an email okay thank you thank you all bye. see you next time bye bye